The Lord be with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to worship on Palm Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion. I want to offer a special word of welcome to visitors and guests who we have with us here today. I also want to let you all know that this portion of the service right now is being recorded. We've got the, uh, the phone up on the tripod up there, yes. So it will be posted um, along with the, uh, the, the recorded version of the service later this afternoon. So um, I just wanted you all to be aware of that. If there's anyone that, that feels the need to step out of the range of the camera, you, <laughs> you, you may consider yourself informed. I will ask you to please double check your cell phones now, make sure that they are silenced for worship. And about our service today, we begin Palm Sunday on a joyous note with the triumph, triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. But during the service, we shift to an emphasis on the passion or the suffering of Christ as a preparation for Holy Week and Easter. The gospel reading today is very much that passion story. The congregation, you all will remain seated for most of it. Towards the end, we will invite you to stand for, that, for part of that gospel. And in your bulletin, you'll see there are parts of that gospel that are in bold for the congregation to read in unison. If you want to learn more about what happens during Holy Week, you can stay for a Bible study in here, in between services, where we'll be looking at some of the events of Holy Week that don't get mentioned in any of our services. And we do hope that you will stay after service, either for coffee fellowship or for Bible study. Quick announcements, there is an order form for Easter flowers on the back of the bulletin. This week, the devotions are special and different for Holy Week. So we hope that you will um, download th those or um, grab hard copies from the Narthex. <coughs> also, I want to remind you that we will have a memorial service for Renata McKenzie here this Wednesday at 11 a.m. with a reception to follow. Other announcements, including the Holy Week schedule, are in your bulletin. And I do want to let folks know the Maundy Thursday and Good Friday <coughs> evening services will be live streamed. The Good Friday service, the evening one, is a seven last words tenebrae service with several retired pastors, including Pastor John Ray, uh, joining Pastor Page and myself for brief reflections on the last words of Jesus from the cross. So we do hope that you will be a part of all of those services. We begin our procession with palms. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Mercifully assist us, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts by which you have given us life everlasting. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Then Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this. The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, 
the stones would shout out. Let us raise our palm branches. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and grace. We praise and thank you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed son of David and king of kings by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. We ask that you bless these branches and those who bear them and grant that we may ever hail him as our Lord and King and follow him with perfect confidence through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In, in the, the name, name of the Lord. Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray together. O God of mercy and might, in the mystery of the passion of your Son, you offer your infinite life to the world. Gather us around the cross of Christ 
and preserve us until the resurrection. Through your Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. of the Lord according to St. Luke chapter 23. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him saying, we found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered, you say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. 
Even Herod with his soldiers, soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Then Pilate called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, <coughs> Away, Away with, with this fellow! Release, release Barabbas for us. for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified. And their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He, he saved, saved others. others. Let, Let him, him save, save himself, himself, if he, he is, is the Messiah, Messiah of God, God his, his chosen one. one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Please stand as you are able. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, 
Into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It all changed so suddenly, didn't it? We started with Jesus entering Jerusalem in triumph, with crowds of people waving palm branches and cheering Hosanna until their voices were hoarse. The people even gave up their coats and threw them down on the dusty path to prepare the way for Jesus. The crowd's mood was joyous as they celebrated the great deeds of power that God's Son had accomplished. Luke calls this crowd the multitude of the disciples. They were enthusiastic followers of Jesus, and they could not contain their joy and praise. But then, the crowd's attitude toward Jesus changed abruptly. They got swept up in the plot of the religious officials, called the scribes and the Pharisees, who felt threatened by Jesus' popularity and his teaching. The number of people who wanted to silence Jesus and keep things the way they had always been grew. And not only did Jesus' human opponents start to close in on him, Satan himself found the moment he had been waiting for ever since he left Jesus at the end of his temptation in the wilderness. Luke tells us shortly before today's passage begins that Satan entered Judas Iscariot. That set into motion Judas's betrayal of his Lord. That betrayal gathers momentum as our gospel reading unfolds. Pilate wanted to let Jesus go, but the crowds insisted that he was guilty of all the false charges they whipped up against him. One minute they were shouting, Hosanna. The next they're shouting, crucify him. Eventually, Pilate gave in to the crowd's demands. He handed Jesus over, and the Son of God began the final part of his life on earth. He took his last steps toward his death on the cross. Even though we know that Jesus' suffering, his passion, is the very way God planned to save the world from sin, death, and the devil, it's not easy to hear this story. It's not easy to experience our emotions swinging from praise and adoration one minute to anger and condemnation the next. For us, the combination of Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday makes us confront the ways we've fallen short in our loyalty to Jesus. Hearing how Jesus suffered for us makes us acutely aware of the sin we've tried to hide, the selfishness we've tried to cover up, and the pride that separates us from our neighbors and our Lord. If shouting crucify him in a worship service makes you uncomfortable, you're not alone. We don't like to admit that our sin has caused us to, to turn away from our Lord and from the love he wants to give us. When the sinlessness of Jesus shines a light on our sin, the natural response is to try and extinguish that light. That's why the crowd bossed Pilate around and demanded that Jesus be put to death. They wanted to get rid of him. The crowd thought that by condemning Jesus to die on the cross, they were getting the last word on this teacher and preacher from Galilee, the one who claimed to be the Son of God. They thought that death would be the end of his story. As I mentioned a moment ago, shouting crucify him doesn't feel great to us. What's more, now that we've heard the story of Jesus' suffering, it's tempting to rush ahead to the joy to come. But I want to caution us against moving too quickly to Easter. Holy Week, which begins today, is a unique time. 
It's a week where we can sit with the hard parts of our souls and our lives. We can examine our sin, sadness, and shame, and then we can hand it all over to Jesus. On Good Friday, he will be nailed to the cross, and our sin, along with the power of the devil and death itself, will be nailed to the cross with him. And then, a short time later, God will show the world that death is not the end of Jesus' story. But don't skip ahead to the ending. Spend this week contemplating the ways in which you need Jesus to be your Savior. And as you pray, ask God to show you the burdens you can lift up to Jesus on the cross. Worship on Monday, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday so you can continue learning how Jesus suffered for your sake. Take time to reflect on the events of Jesus' last days on earth. Don't rush ahead to next Sunday. Prepare for it. Finally, prepare for things to change suddenly again when God shows the extent of his love in a brand new way. When the world least expects it, the crucified Jesus will rise. He will be changed from a lifeless body in a tomb to a resurrected body in a garden. Jesus loves you. Through his suffering and death, he will give you the gift of the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Spend this holy week preparing for this greatest change of all, and you will experience the joy of new and eternal life that is yours through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Let us bring our needs and the needs of all the world before the Lord, whose mercy endures forever. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your Son. Be with us this week as we contemplate his suffering and death for our sake. 
Help us prepare our hearts and minds to experience the fullness of your love shown to us and to the whole world in the cross of Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord Jesus, during this Holy Week, increase our faith and trust in you. Teach us how we can live more intentionally as your disciples. Strengthen our church and empower us to share the good news of your death and resurrection so others may know your love and grace. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy is great. O Holy Spirit, stir up in us compassion and generosity. Make us instruments of God's peace. Show us how we can serve others as individual disciples and as a congregation. We pray for all those in need of peace, especially in Ukraine. Protect those suffering from persecution in China. Give wisdom and insight to leaders throughout the world so no one has to experience poverty, hunger, homelessness, or any kind of danger. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Almighty God, heal those who are ill with COVID-19. We lift before you now all who are sick, grieving, or in other special need, especially Pastor John Ranney, Ray Gannon, Lee Clark, June Breitfeller, Linda Kakamas, Barbara Seth, David, Keith Wilson, Todd French, Don Hanna, Kathy Hubbard, Donna Abel, Greg Waddington, Katie De Silva, Irene Ward, Corey Subjinski, Helene Reed, Kevin Boots, Pete Murphy, Johnny Lynn Jones, Patty Dolliver, Dickie Cooper, Diana Smith, Walter Donovan, Shirley Gerhold, Nanette Cassell, and the family of Renata McKenzie, and those whom we name now, aloud or in the silence of our heart. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Merciful God, hear our cry when we call to you. Cast out the fear of sin and death so that we, along with all of creation, may praise you with open and trusting hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, O Lord, make us bold to pray as your Son taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. If you're watching the live stream or a recorded service and there are others with you, take a moment now to greet them with a sign of peace. And to those in the sanctuary, we do ask you to stay in your pews, but you can greet those in your household and then turn and wave to share the peace with others in the sanctuary. Jesus was 33 years old. For 33 years, he had experienced human flesh, feeling everything other people felt, getting hungry and thirsty, tired and sore. He was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane and dragged from one trial to the next. He was sentenced to die. After being humiliated, he was forced to drag his own cross through the streets of Jerusalem to the hill of crucifixion. Down the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem that day, 
The soldiers tried to clear the narrow streets, but the crowd pressed in to see the man condemned to die on Calvary. He was bleeding from a beating. There were stripes upon his back, and he wore a crown upon his head and he bore with every step the scorn of those who cried out for his death down the Via Dolorosa called the way of suffering like a lamb came the Messiah Christ the King but he chose For those who are joining us online, we are glad that you are with us for this beginning of Holy Week, and we're about to bring the live stream portion of our service to an end now, and so we bless you to be at peace wherever you are and to continue on the way of Holy Week until the greatest change of all, Easter. Be at peace and serve the Lord wherever you are. Thanks be to God.